Last time on Heart Story, God of Destruction Jin of Universe 11 would invade Point Central and then attempt to take Zeno back to the Grand Priest. While the creator of all would remain completely silent, Hearts unwittingly challenged Jin to an unwinnable battle, thinking he had come to kidnap Zeno for sinister purposes. After defeating our protagonist, the Omni King would go berserk at the sight of his new friend being injured, which revealed to Hearts that he too was a god. He would go on to obliterate everything in sight, including spades. However, Few was able to rip a tear in space-time to save the both of them at the last moment. And after seeing what he had done, Zeno would request the Grand Priest, who just arrived, to erase his mind once they return home. This is part 5 of an ongoing series. Catch up fully using the link in the description. Age 734. A few years ago, Jin holds an attack standing amongst fresh rubble like royalty. This is more than likely Hearts' homeworld. He announces to all nearby. He regrets to inform them that their people have committed an unforgivable crime. They dared play with the rules of time travel. Hello, we meet Hearts' mother and father, Clover and Diamond. Helpless to save their people, Clover can only shout out to her children that they love them, as Diamond tells Spades to take care of her brother. Very similar to the origin of Dragon Ball's greatest hero, they're sent off into space, hopefully to safety. As Jin gazes over to another direction to ominously utter, Too bad. Is he fully aware of their escape, or is he referring to something else? Back in the present, Arts thinks to himself that's when he started hating the gods. So self-righteous, they decide who gets to live and who dies, without warning and based upon their own deposition. Zooming out, we recognize a familiar looking medical machine. Before he continues with his thoughts that it was the gods who ruined his life, his planet, his friends, family. The gods laughed at him while he trusted their master without even knowing it. How shameful. His abrupt stress and physical jerking attracts the attention of few. He's surprised to see him regain consciousness so soon. It's only been two days. Literally exploding from the device. Few rolls his eyes, that machine was brand new. Scowling. Hearts demands to know where his sister is. Keeping up with a sarcastic nature, the demon folds his arms to quip, first of all, hello, before deciding against mincing any words. If he wants to know everything, Zeno has destroyed Point Central. He only had time to save Hearts. It was either him or Spades. Reality finally hits our hero. He slumps to the ground and asks if that brat really killed his sister. Not evading the truth even a little, you confirms. Taking this in, the rebel makes his way to a nearby window. He inquires on their whereabouts. This planet doesn't look familiar. The demon's surprised. He was expecting his now partner to be angry, but he doesn't appear to be so. He's actually a little disappointed. At any rate, they're on planet Barbary of the 10th universe. Getting a look outside, we're greeted by an ocean of trees. But Planet Barbary, doesn't that sound just slightly familiar? Glancing down, Hearts questions about the lizard-looking people. It's explained they're the inhabitants of this planet, the Barbarians. Hugh then asks Hearts what he plans on doing with them. And what else? He wants to go say hello. Without objecting, the demon points him in the direction of some clothes he's prepared for him. They should fit. Behind him, we see a familiar insignia on the wall. And to its left, a familiar set of balls as well. Though, as for the clothes, Hearts wants to know what he did with his coveted coat. Though he needn't worry, it was in bad condition, but he plans to refurbish it and create new equipment for him soon. For the time being, he'll just have to be content with what they have. Luckily, our protagonist understands, only stating he has to train if he wants to defeat Jin. But what kind of people are these barbarians? Pacifists? Hostile? While they're not technologically advanced, they still fight pretty well. He can allow his ally to train here for two months, but then they'll have to go to Universe 6. This leaves the other to question if their goal has changed. Are they not supposed to be going after that Universal Seed? But that is still very much the end game. They just have to get some special items first. Causing Hearts to suddenly question without hesitating. The Dragon Balls. 
Few here appears to have forgotten he can read people's hearts and transcribe their thoughts. Even though this seems to cause immense stress to the demon, the renegade simply bids him a brief farewell and for him to have fun with his screens. Hopping outside, Hearts greets the natives with a chipper. Hello there. So you can control Key. That's a good beginning. Stop! Let's see what you can do. Brushing himself off. Hart smiles, he thinks he's seen enough today. These guys are pretty strong. By training together, they should both be able to progress. Though the primitive locals don't appear exactly as enthusiastic. Hart leaps into the air, shouting his goodbyes. For two months, Hart's trained alongside the Barbarians. He developed new and innovative fighting techniques. The resilient nature of his sparring partners proved more than enough for him to test his limits and beyond. And inside their compound, few discovered the existence of an evil Saiyan with a particular aura that seemed to intrigue him. He was unlike any of his kind ever witnessed before. But if Cumber is long dead in this reality, could there be another Saiyan just like him among the living? Before leaving the planet, Hearts had finally met eye to eye and sympathized with the Barbarians. While simple creatures, they led an honest life and only strive for perseverance. And somewhat, the Barbarians felt the same about their visitor. Deep down, at least. Universe 6, Planet Tuffle. Waiting long enough to ask, Hearts finally beckons what these Dragon Ball things are. Again, knowing he can't lie, Yu explains their magical orbs capable of fulfilling great wishes. He needs to bring a specific Saiyan back to life. Does this mean Fuse technology can look through time itself? Cumber, the evil Saiyan. Or something like that. His energy could contaminate other Saiyans and increase their power. He has a couple idea for experiments, but needs to see a pattern before anything's concrete. But what could the demon have in mind? Could he be planning an army of infected Saiyans? This causes Harsh's ears to perk. He inquires if these Dragon Balls can resurrect the dead. Obviously, this could do quite a bit to fix his life. He could wish back his planet, his people, his sister. View closes his eyes. They can only do such things under certain circumstances. Resurrecting a sister would be impossible, though. She was erased by Zeno. Being erased by the Omni King and dying by traditional means are very different when it comes to the afterlife. A protagonist puts two and two together. So if the wish exceeds the power of the Dragon Balls, it can't be fulfilled. Naturally, that's about right. The specific set of balls they're using were originally from a planet called Earth in this Universe 6. They are scattered all over the universe after they are last used. However, the events following would lead the humans to kill each other. Hearts interrupts. He asks if the Dragon Balls were created by the gods. Fuse Heart refuses to reveal the answer. But nope, that's not the case at all. They are created by a race of beings called the Namekians. They are the originators of the artifacts they seek. But somehow, the humans got their hands on them and brought them to Earth. And from the way the demon's talking about the Dragon Balls, it's like he's inferring there are other sets out there. Which is true. There are several of them, and they are mere fragments of the Super Dragon Balls. Those are each a planet in size and created by the god Zalama. The Super Dragon Balls can make any wish come true. They have no limits and infinite potential. They surpass even the will of the gods themselves. Getting amped, Hart assumes the problem is Few doesn't know where this set is. His heart was rather talkative this time around. With his new goal likely decided, our pair merely steps away from setting their plan in motion. When Few is attacked from out of nowhere, Hart glances over to see where the source originated from. The smoke clears, revealing a pair of familiar warriors. The one on our left chides Common for missing her target, the other telling Orin to shut up. 
Few appears already familiar with the duo, finding frustration in their arrival. Common shouts, it's that kid from last time. Of course, it's the Tuffles. They tell Few he won't so easily escape this time. But before that, they would like to play a little game together. Arch chimes his friends don't seem very nice, though he does recognize them as Tuffles, likely reading their hearts. However, the demon has a correction to make. They aren't Tuffles, but Neo machines created by the Tuffles. They killed their creators. What previous relationship could Few have with the Neo Tuffle twins? Could they also be seeking the Dragon Balls or Universal Seed for their own purposes? Most importantly, how do they stack up to hearts in terms of strength?